Today I'm going to talk about this little kit here I got from Goodwill. And as a spoiler alert, all I'm going to do is talk about it. I couldn't get either one of these to work. The game or the sound source. Um, this is from 1991 by Walt Disney. It has a DOS game inside. And this is why I really got this, the sound source which is an external speaker connected to your parallel port. In 1991 when this came out a lot of people didn't have computers with sound cards and speakers. So this was a very inexpensive item and Disney created it so that people could buy their games and get some additional value out of them. Let's take a look at some of this here. Compatible with MS-DOS. You can read there what it's compatible with. No on-disk copy protection. Looking at the back here, groundbreaking game player's PC strategy guide. I'm coming to save you, baby Herman. So here's some of the things about the sound source here. Easy to connect and use, high quality speaker and amplifier, volume control and headphone jack, and it's battery operated. developed by Blue Sky Software. Let's open the box and take things out and look at them. All right, here's the items for the Hair Raising Havoc game. Five discs. Some type of little spinny card you use when you play the game that tells you what to do. Along with the game you have your passport to fun and savings. Free Mickey Mouse watch. Those are expensive these days. Receive your sound source for just ten dollars. And here you have the Toon Town Times. And pause your screen and read this if you want. I'm not sure I would, having read it. It's pretty minimal humor. You can read uh, Jessica's column. Pretty bad advice. There's Bugs and Baby Herman. Then you have the instructions to the game. I got stopped at the very beginning. I could not get my discs to load. Now, this could be me. I'm using a 1999 Gateway computer here. And this was around when, I don't know, I think it was a Windows 
maybe, from 1991. And I don't know anything about the uh, device drivers. I've got Windows 98, so would nothing in this manual or the sound source manual mentions needing to install a driver. I'm not sure how that's possible with something in an LPT port or local printer port, but uh, they don't. And I was wondering maybe if the driver is installed on uh, one of the discs, which is why they just don't bother to mention it. But if it was, it was for 3.1 and not Windows 98. Now, I have forgotten more than I ever knew about DOS. So some of these things were just totally alien to me almost. Uh, did not work with the A install, anything like that. Um, but you can see that you start it. If anybody pauses their screen and reads this and has any ideas about why I might not have been able to get mine going, I would appreciate it, but you'll see from my efforts right after this that uh, it just didn't happen. Just didn't happen. I don't have a joystick. I was going to have to play it with the keyboard. That would have been all right. My goal in this was not to really play the game, but to just look at the sound source. Here's a troubleshooting guide with the sound source. Somebody has printed something there that was obviously important. All right, so that was the hair raising havoc part of the kit. But what I really wanted was the sound source, so let's take a look at that. Here's the manual that came with the sound source. It has some typical registration papers. There's not much to the user's guide here. Just shows you uh, how to connect it. Troubleshooting guide, very minimal. The RF information legal. Here's the sound source. Um, it's always on. This is just a volume knob. And I did get this light to briefly come on when the computer was booting up and it was connected. But then it went out, so I never was able to uh, see it any further. It has a headphone jack. The batteries in here. And here's the important part, the sound converter. This plugs into your parallel port. The little phone jack plugs into your sound source in the back here. Then if you have a printer connected to your parallel port already, you can pass this through to the printer. Boy, that's gotten dirty. Cleaner. All right, there's Mickey's face, the sound converter. Supposedly, this is like another product of the time that I think it was the Kovax speech thing, and Disney uh, appropriated that for. It's a little uh, sound converter here. So, 
I did open this up and take a look at it on the inside to see what it was. So let's just insert that right here. Here's the inside of the sound source. Two watt speaker, I don't know what that symbol is there. Looks like they cheaped out or something and didn't put a screw in that hole there. If you look carefully you can see there's a Mickey Mouse embossed in the grill there. You can see the two big ears. Okay, we've looked at the inside. Let me uh, show you what happened when I connected it to my computer and tried to get it to work. Alright, we have it installed on the parallel port on the back of the Gateway Essential from 1999. I don't have a printer. I don't have a parallel port printer hooked up to this, so I don't need to plug the printer back in. The light briefly lit as the computer booted up. There was a little beep. The sound source. All right, start programs. Where's it at? A long time since I went to an MS DOS prompt. Ah, there it is. All right. Disk one installed A colon enter. Install. Well, I don't know how many decades it's been since I've had this joyous message. Well, let me see what's going on here. Well, no matter what I do, I get the same message over and over again. I wonder how many times I reboot. Floppy disk drive is working. I'll try some other stuff in there, but this is not. So for right now, I'm dead in the water for this hair raising havoc game anyway. Yeah, maybe this is the problem. I really don't know. It's been so long since I worked on any of these Windows configurations. But no, I'm not going to go into auto exec bat and remove clock and things like that. It's not worth it. Well, there you saw that it did not go well on my computer. Sorry. But that's the Disney Sound Source external parallel port speaker and Disney's Hair Raising Havoc game from 1991. Somewhere on YouTube, someone plays this game. Um, not with the Sound Source, but just on a computer somehow. And there's also another one or two videos on the sound source itself. So you can take a look at those. I'm just sorry that I couldn't demonstrate it, but at least we talked about it a little. Anybody have any suggestions for me on how to make this work? I'd appreciate it. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye.